I'd like to work through a very specific solution to one of the problems that uses this object rolling down a hill. And the uh, problem that I'm going to work out is specifically a problem that we used, uh, that we did on the exam last fall. And so this is a, the example is that there's this thing called a pangolin, which is a type of anteater that, you know, when it tries to escape from a predator, supposedly they curl into a ball and roll away down a hill. And so the idea is that if you have a pangolin with a mass, in this case of eight kilograms, that curls up into a ball and rolls without slipping down a hill, uh, whose slope is 20 degrees, what is the magnitude of the pangolin's linear acceleration? And so uh, what we're going to do is use uh, the example that we, that we did previously of an object rolling down a hill without slipping, and we're going to um, calculate an actual number for the linear acceleration. And so just to sketch this out, here is my slope. The angle is 20 degrees. And then here's my pangolin with a diameter of r that is going to be accelerating down the slope in this direction and, of course, rotating uh, clockwise as you look at it. So now let's get going and draw all the forces. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is consider the physical situation here. Um, we have to calculate both forces and torques that are acting on this, on this object. And so what we know is that the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration, and we know that in the x direction, this is going to be ma, or not equal to zero, and in the y direction, it's going to be equal to zero. And this is choosing a set of coordinate axes where the x-axis lines up along the ramp. And then we also know that the sum of torques has to be equal to I alpha, where I is the moment of inertia and alpha is the angular acceleration. And it's going to roll without slipping. And that just means, um, let me try writing that so you can actually read it. And the fact that it's rolling without slipping means that the linear acceleration is equal to alpha times r. So it's the angular acceleration times the radius. So now, let's go ahead and draw our forces. And so what I'm going to do is draw not just the forces, but where they're applied. So this is not exactly a free body diagram, um, but it's similar to a free body diagram. And so the first thing is we have the normal force. Then we have the weight of the object pulling down, and that, of course, is equal to just mass times gravity. And then the third force is the force of friction. And the force of friction, and this is why it's not exactly a free body diagram, is because I'm showing where the friction acts. The force of friction acts here at the contact point between our rolling object, our sphere, and the surface. And so this is just the force of friction. And so those are our three forces, and then we know that the torque is going to be exerted from the center of rotation down to where the force of friction is over some radius r. Okay, so now we can go ahead and write down all of our equations. And so this is going to be, first off, let's do the forces. So in the x direction, where uh, positive x is down the slope, that means that the x component of the weight, which is w sine theta, is going to be pointing down, minus the force due to friction, and this is the force due to static friction, because it's rolling without slipping, and that's just going to be equal to ma. In the y direction, we have the normal force pointing up minus the weight times cosine zero, because that's the component in the y direction, and that's going to be equal to zero. There's no acceleration in the y direction. And finally, we want to write down all of the torques. So the sum of the torques is just equal to r times 
the force of friction, and that's equal to I times the angular acceleration, the moment of an inertia times the angular acceleration. And so, if you recall, since we're rolling without slipping, that means that back up here, the acceleration is equal to the, the I'm sorry, the linear acceleration is equal to the angular acceleration times radius, then we can solve this equation a little bit, we can rearrange it. And so what we can say is that the force due to static friction is equal to I A over R squared. And what I'm doing there is replacing this alpha with A over R, and then I'm dividing both sides by R, because I have this R over here, and so that gives me the force of friction is IA over R squared. Then, what that gives me is, taking the X component up there, that gives me the weight sine theta, and I'm just going to write it down as MG sine of theta minus the force due to friction, so IA over R squared, and that's just equal to mass times acceleration. And if you look at this, you can see that I am going to, that I can solve directly for the acceleration. And so I'm going to skip some of the intermediate steps, and what I'll do is move the acceleration over to the left-hand side, and all of the other terms over to the right-hand side, and then I get A is equal to G sine theta over 1 plus I over M R squared. And so then I can plug in all of my numbers. And so I know that theta is equal to 20 degrees. I know that the mass of the pangolin is 8 kilograms. I know that the radius of the pangolin is equal to its diameter over 2 which is 0.15 meters. And then I know that the moment of inertia of the solid ball is equal to 2 fifths m r squared. And so I can do that calculation using this mass, 8 kilograms, and this radius, 0.15 meters. And then I can plug everything into this equation up here. Actually, strictly speaking, I really don't need to calculate the whole moment of inertia, but I can go ahead and do it. Um, and then what I can do is solve the whole problem and see that the acceleration in this case is going to be equal to 2.397 meters per second squared. And there you go.